from Seattle, Washington, it's Mad in the Kitchen Live with me, Madeline Smithberg. Joining me from Cape Town, South Africa, Damianti Gachar, teaching us to make potatoes with peppers. So grab your fenugreek and coriander seeds and let's cook together. Hello, and welcome to Mad in the Kitchen Live. This is the second episode of season one. There will be more of our eight week run of live interactive shows from right here in my kitchen for the next seven weeks, every Saturday at this time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. You might have to do some math. I'm going to be cooking live with an accomplished chef or foodie who will be teaching me how to make a signature dish. And here's the fun part. You, the audience, yes, you in the sweatpants, I'm talking to you, are invited to cook along with us at home. Tonight, my guest, and this is crazy, all the way from Cape Town, South Africa, where it is two in the morning, is Damianti Gachar, a cook and author of Conscious Cuisine, which explores a fusion of Ayurvedic principles and healthy vegetarian cooking. Hello, Damianti. Tell everybody what we're making tonight. Hi, Madeline. Uh, we are making potatoes with peppers. Um, and as you say, I can't believe that I'm in the kitchen at two in the morning. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> You're a trooper. I really appreciate it. I'm so sorry about the, you know, global time zones. Uh, why don't we, I want to get going. So let's show the audience the ingredients we're going to be making for tonight's beautiful dish. Okay. So we are going to need potatoes and Madeline, thanks so much for the suggestion of using a red pepper. I um, think it's really great to have a bit of color. And then I'm, I'm going to use both red and green peppers and an onion. We also need salt. We need turmeric. We need some uh, coriander seeds, some fenugreek seeds. And I have opted to use coconut oil today. So those Ooh. are our basic ingredients. Wow. I'm going with, uh, with vegetable oil, but coconut oil is a really beautiful idea, and I sort of wish that I had thought of it. Uh, so also here with us tonight is Marisa Mahoney, and Marisa will be interacting with you guys at home. I mean, you in the yoga pants. I think you need to wash them. Throughout the show, she's going to be acting as your surrogate. Cool. Hi, Marisa. Hi, Madeline. Hi, everyone. I'm Marisa, and I'm a producer here at Mad in the Kitchen. And I want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown on how this show is broken up because it's really cool. So we have three ways for the audience to interact and engage with our show. So one of them is to be a home chef. And we have home chefs in the house tonight and they get to cook along with Madeline and our guest chef and really get to interact directly and ask them questions and pop in um, throughout the show. So tonight our guest chefs are, our home chef, sorry, John Idelson and Bobby Camille in Monterey, California. Howdy, howdy, uh, Chris and here. Melissa Fritchie in Tumble, Texas. And Hi. Ken Jordan in London, England, again. Hi. Ken, it's two in the morning. Oh, the commitment, I love it. <laughs> so say hi to our home chefs for this evening. We also have Zoom chefs. So if you're cooking along with us on Zoom, you can interact with Madeline throughout the show and pop in periodically in our Zoom room and cook together there. Um, then, there's all of you watching on YouTube and I will be interacting with you in the comments throughout the show. Um, but if you are cooking along, we can't see you. So next week, if you wanna hop into our Zoom room with our Zoom chefs, that would be amazing. So I wanna know, this is a vegetarian recipe tonight. I wanna know who in the house is a vegetarian? Who's a vegan? Who's a carnivore like me? 
even though I was vegan for three months and I loved it, but it was very <laughs> hard to maintain. So props to all of my vegans out there. Let us know. <laughs> Mad, back to you. All right. All right, Damianti. I think it's time to get cooking. I'm going to turn over the reins to you and I will be following along just like our home chefs and our Zoom chefs and hopefully some people at home. I've got my knife and I'm ready to go. Take it away. Great. So I am first going to be peeling the potatoes. And I know that you said you opted not to. It's totally up to you what you want to do. I'm going to so do one we... and then leave the skin on the other. I've got this new fancy peeler and I'm anxious to try it. But I really enjoy potato skins. So I will do it just to be a team player. Sure, sure. So uh, shall I go through the steps just uh, uh, to, to make no, sure let's just that dive everybody... into it. Let's dive into it. Okay, sure. Uh, my new peeler is really not very good. <laughs> I'm going to leave the skin on. But Damianti is peeling the potatoes. And look, Bobby's peeling hers. You have a better peeler than me, Bobby. I can't hear Bobby. Oh, she, she's peeling. She's just concentrating. She's concentrating. She doesn't want to peel her fingers off, which I True. think is a very good uh, idea. Look, I found another peeler. I'm just peeling because it's fun. Oh, my God, that is so much better in terms of the peeling experience. So, Damianti, uh, can you use different types of potatoes? I have a, a little bird told me that perhaps some of our uh, our home chefs are veering off of your recipe. I'm talking to you, John Edelson. Yes, we did make a little modification. We're into sweet potatoes. So, um, of course, I like my sweet potatoes as potato fries, but... Uh, Bobby and I, you know, we have a deal here. I eat the uh, center and she eats the skins. We've got it perfectly worked out. You guys are so great. Uh, Ken, did you peel yours there in England? Uh, I actually don't eat potatoes, so I'm actually using a turnip, which is a wow. paleo equivalent. That's actually a great adaptation. So, so far here we have sweet potatoes and we have a turnip. Uh, Melissa and Chris, what are you guys doing? Well, we just have regular potatoes, skins on. Yep. Skins mm -hmm. on. Idaho, Idaho potatoes. I know. I like a lot of different types of potato. I'm really a big fan of the Yukon Gold and the Fingerling. Uh, don't love the red potatoes as much. Don't know why. Apparently, I'm reddest. Uh, so, Damianti, have you peeled all of your potatoes? Her potatoes are peeled. All right, so now let's slice them up. So, a pattern, so I'm cutting my potatoes into um, 12 pieces. I think it's, it's, I'm just cutting them smaller so that they cook quite quickly. Are you all with me? We are with you. Uh, how are the Zoom cooks doing? Are you guys all uh, up to speed and we're on to slicing the potatoes right now? If you haven't finished sure. peeling, really don't worry about it because I think it tastes just as good uh, with the peels on. I'm going to do four potatoes. That's what I've decided. That's I like to make decisions. I like to uh, feel like I'm in control of my life and the world, even though we all know that I'm not. Uh, and so deciding that I'm going to do this many potatoes gives me a feeling of power, however limited that power is. I'm slicing my potatoes. Uh, we made it last night for the rehearsal, Damianti, and it was absolutely delicious. Absolutely oh, I'm delicious. I'm happy, happy to hear that. I'm also very happy to hear that some people are using, John, you're using sweet potato. I actually made the dish with sweet potato during the week and was very pleased with the results. Um, I've never used turnip to replace potato, but I'm sure it'll be very interesting. I bet turnip would work well. I bet uh, parsnip could work. Yes, I'm sure it would. I love parsnips. It reminds me of my grandmother's chicken soup. 
Oh, okay. Um, I'm cheating today. I know you're cutting four potatoes, Madeline. I'm, I've only done two. So that's, that's why okay. I got done quicker than you. Oh, this is not a race, although one point for <laughs> Damianti. Um, uh, all it's, right. It's, there's, a re there's a reason for it. I didn't want to put too big a pan on this gas stove, so I'm working according to uh, the size of the pot I have. Well, my thing is I have a big crew here working with me, and uh, I think they're expecting to be fed. So I want to make sure that there's enough for everybody to taste this beautiful dish that we are making. Uh, and oh, that's, so that's I'm, enough. and I have a nice big pan, so hopefully mine will cook as quickly as yours. Yes. Otherwise, uh, you're going to win. And it's not a competition. <laughs> uh, but but I but I do need to win. That's like a thing in my head. So yeah. now are we no, cutting I, the I, onion? I'm very competitive. Uh, we first going to cut. We first gonna cut the peppers. Okay. So, so I learned a really I, cool trick. Let you show me your way. Okay, I've cut it in half, and then I use my finger to remove the seeds from it and the membrane. Okay. So this is a trick that What's I did. The trick? show. My trick is I did a thing called Mad Marchness, and I cooked with a Cajun chef named Jamil Johnson, and he taught me this. You cut around, 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 and around, and you just completely avoid the seeds. It's like a really oh, wow. cool trick. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, I am an old dog, and it's hard to teach me new tricks at this stage in my life, but uh, I felt that this was really an, a cool thing that I wish I had known for a lot more years. So now we're doing them yes. into strips, right? Now, now we, we cut the peppers. Uh, try and cut them approximately the same size as your pot potatoes so that everything cooks evenly. So I've cut okay. half the green pepper and now I'm doing the red pepper. Okay, I'm going with strips because I like to have different dialogue of the shapes talking to each other. Sure. And sure, I've just no uh, last night I realized that the peppers can get mushy and they still taste delicious. So it's yes. really the potatoes that have to uh, get cooked through. But look how great this works! Boom, boom, correct, boom! Correct. It's a game changer. Now I'm going to do this one in cubes just because I don't live by your rules, Damianti. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. As a cook, you have free reign. <laughs> Exactly. That's the beauty of cooking. I feel like it's something that you can do. And even if you follow a recipe, you can make it your own. And uh, oh, yes. I, I've always found it to be such a lovely uh, way of relaxing. And it ends up with something beautiful that the people around you get to eat. Uh, and now I've turned it into my job. So look at me. I've just uh, yeah. brilliant. I think I think it's so satisfying being able to feed people around you. I agree. And I think that cooking together with other people is one of my absolute favorite activities. And maybe someday I can actually come to Cape Town and we can do this in your kitchen together when all this Nazi craziness is done. Yes, of course. Of course. That'll be wonderful. It's uh, South Shall Africa we... is definitely, yep. Sorry, uh, now I'm waiting for you to finish your peppers and then I will peel my onion. All right, here we go. I did three peppers. How many did you do? I did one only because I used half green pepper and half uh, red oh, pepper. Oh, oh, oh. I did three and three. Uh, wait, let's see how everybody else is. Look at Melissa yes. and Chris. And oh my goodness, oh Bobby, those look so beautiful. How are my Zoom chefs doing? I want to hold your, your peppers up so I can see them. I see an onion. This is so cool, you guys. Do you understand what's happening? We're cooking together and some of us are in London and Damianti's in South Africa and I'm in Washington and people are all over the country. This is crazy in a really positive way. All right, I cut off the two ends. Uh, there are many fancy ways to peel an onion. How do you do it, Damianti? I like cubes, but I'm going to first peel the onion and then I'll show you that I'm gonna be uh, chopping it into the tiny cubes. Okay, we're totally together because I am peeling as well. 
I have peeled my onion. Now I'm going to follow so you. So I think, I think somebody asked what type of onion we're using. I'm using the yellow onion. I am using a yellow onion too. Oh, great, 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 great. Here in Washington, we have really beautiful onions, the Walla Walla. Uh, okay. It's a very sweet onion, but it won't be out till a little bit later in the season. Oh, uh, sure. So now right, I'm cutting the onion in half. She cuts it in half, puts the flat side down. Now I notice that you have yeah. water that you're soaking everything in. Uh, apparently just, I missed I missed the memo. No problem. That's okay. Madeline, uh, I'm going to switch my stove on so that the oil can warm up a little before I add the chopped onion. Okay, okay, so everybody you. turn your stove on. What? How high should our flame be or if we have an it electric should, stove? Um, a medium heat. Medium heat. I'm going to the stove. I've got my oil. Here I go. All right, I'm going to heat my pan before I put the oil in. That's a good plan. You know what I'm really excited for? Uh, the crushing of the coriander seeds. I got a brand new uh, mortar and pestle just oh, for this that's occasion. Nice. That's good. I love that process because you get okay, the most so while, fresh. So while we're waiting for the pan to heat, shall we chop the onions? Yes. Is that okay? That's perfect. So as you can see, I'm doing long slices and then I'll go across and do the little squares. Are you able to see? Yes. So I like these onions uh, quite small, but there's no hard and fast rule. If you wanted to leave them sliced or you wanted the onion a little more chunky, there's actually nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Tommy, auntie. <laughs> I'm crying. Are you crying? <laughs> is everybody is everybody crying? I, <laughs> I'm not crying. Maybe maybe I'm not too close to the onion. <laughs> I'm, I'm not crying. crying. It's the weirdest sensation because I feel like I'm crying, but I'm not sad. I've never been happier. This is like the most fun I've ever had in my life. But I am maybe crying. It's, maybe it's tears of maybe it's tears of joy. <laughs> It is tears of joy. It is tears of joy. What an amazing opportunity this is for all of us, and especially me and you. Um, I'm going to put my oil in. Is that a good thing to do? Yes. We need to put oil in now. And how much am I putting? Uh, you're doing quite a bit, so two tablespoons. All right. I am the queen of never measuring. Uh, That's fine. I'm a, just I'm wing a it. renegade. I'm a renegade, just That's like uh, John Edelson. You can just wing it. I'm going to wing it. I always go with my gut. Usually, so here, up till now, it's really served me well. Uh, Melissa and Chris, have you guys chopped your onions? We have. Yeah. We got, got it all ready. Yep. And You're let's ready? go my into Zoom is, Chef's land. Shannon, have you chopped your onions? Onions are chopped. Onions are chopped. They're all chopped. Uh, who's in Oil's there with hot. you, Shannon? You what? Who else is in the Zoom Chef area with you? Oh, it looks like we've got Kyle and Mark and Anne Marie. Hi, you guys. Looks like everyone's Did you chop chopping. Your everyone's are you ready. Crying? Are you guys crying? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Okay, good. I, I like it. I say, now, Damianti. What are we doing? So, is it time to so crush in my, it? So in my warm uh, coconut oil, I'm adding my fenugreek seeds. Okay. So this was and just the be, smallest bag that I could get. And uh, you only I'm need, gonna... Madeline, you'll only need for that quantity uh, just a teaspoon. A teaspoon. I've got my teaspoon already because yes. you told me that. And I'm putting that right into the oil. Yes. 
And make sure you don't burn the fenugreek because it can turn quite bitter. Okay, John Edelson, do you hear that? I'm gonna make sure that my flame is on medium and just let that cook. They, the, the, I'm so interested to talk to you about fenugreek, but I wanna get our food in, so then we have time to chat. Sure. So once we've added our fenugreek seeds, we're going to add the chopped onion. Here you go, little onion, into the fenugreek oil. Can you oh, smell the fenugreek? It's got an amazing aroma. Oh my God. That is beautiful. It's really great. I, I, I noticed that fenugreek is in a lot of Indian recipes. There's a little like celery. No, yeah. I can't hear. Like celery salt. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. My house smells delicious. Or should so I say my I studio? So, I believe somebody wants to know, uh, how do you know uh, when the fenugreek is ready? When you add your fenugreek to the oil, you, and if the oil is warm, you can almost immediately after that add your onion. Um, and the reason for warming your fenugreek in the oil is that with spices, uh, when it hits the warm fat, it releases an aromatic oil in which all the health benefits are based. So it's a very good idea to do that when you're using a seed like fenugreek or even cumin or mustard seed. Uh, those are one of the teachings in Ayurveda. Oh, I can't wait to hear more about Ayurveda. I know a tiny little bit, just enough to be dangerous. Um, but I can't wait to hear more about it from you once we get everything on. All right, so my kitchen smells delicious. Uh, that is happening. What is our next step? Uh, I would like to um, allow the onions to cook so that they translucent, because when you allow that to happen, then you get the sweetness that comes through. Uh, when onions cook, okay. they normally um, bring out a bit of sweetness in the dish. Which is why they call them caramelized onions. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. We don't need sugar. to really. We don't need to wait until they caramelize. But I would like a bit of color on the onion. You shall have it, uh, Marisa. Hi. What's going on in your world? Hi. So Dan Huber is going to make this dish tomorrow because he said it's nice and easy. It looks easy to make. Um, Judith James is saying, hi, I love watching and learning. Maddie, hi. you are the best. Hi, Judith. She's a very special friend of mine. Jacqueline Pratt also says, hey, Maddie, love this. <laughs> Jackie. <sighs> That's hilarious. So I wanted These to prompt the audience with women. a question. Um, Ayurveda is all about being conscious of what you're putting into your body. I want to know something that's maybe not so Ayurvedic that slipped into your lifestyle. Comment them down below. We'll all laugh together. It's okay. I have quite a few things. <laughs> Angle it. All right. So now um, let me look at my onions, Damianti. Oh, okay. They're getting nice and brown. They're not brown, but they're getting translucent which is correct. a very good thing. Yes, correct. You know, I make onions probably five times a week in different things. I will serve them with sausage or with steak or with eggs. Uh, all the things that uh, I make, I usually like to put onions uh, alongside with them. And the interesting thing is I do put either, I usually put cumin seed in or mustard seed, just doing it like, because it seemed like a good idea, but now I know I'm on the right track. And now that I have a lifetime supply of fenugreek, I'll be adding that. Uh, yes, you'll have to add your fenugreek. We'll, we'll chat about the properties of uh, fenugreek uh, soon enough so that you know why you're using the fenugreek. I can't wait. So have you, have you had a chance to check if the onions are translucent yeah. and whether we can? Yeah, I'm good to move on. And so am I. Shall we check on all the other people? Yes. 
It, are everybody's onions translucent? Bobby, are your onions translucent? I, mine are just great. They're That's perfect. Great. Uh, Almost could read a Alyssa, newspaper through them. Chris, Ken. We look great. Our onions are ready. Yep, we're ready. Perfect. All right, ready. everybody ready in the, the, the Zoom step. chefs, how are your onions? Give me a thumbs up. If your onions are translucent. Uh-oh, now I've got a so, 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 so signal. It was like I'm this. Still... <laughs> I'm still heating. Turn your still... flame up. <laughs> um, I think we should crush the uh, the coriander seeds. Can we do that? Cool, cool. Uh, while we're waiting for the onions, we could crush the coriander seeds. Um, a good trick is to dry roast the coriander seeds. Um, it really improves the flavor quite a bit. Oh, I wish we, I had done that, but I didn't. But I do have my brand new mortar and pestle. And I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce the T. Does anybody know that? Is it pestle or pestle? I think it's pestle. Oh, no, I've been so, saying it wrong my whole life. Luckily, it doesn't come up that much in well, conversation. That's, that's my opinion. I'm not sure of, of the exact uh, pronunciation. So as you can see, I'm actually just pressing down on them because I want quite a coarse texture. And even if you just go in a, a, a circular motion, you'll also be able to crush. Yeah, I've been doing seeds. the circular motion. I think mine look beautiful. Oh my God, they're releasing so much aroma. Yes, yes, that's um, the amazing thing about coriander. You know what I don't think a lot of people know is that coriander seeds grow into cilantro. Perfect. It's the same Perfect, yes. plant. And, yes, uh, but there's is. such different flavors, Damianti. Yes. They're yes, totally they are. different they flavors. Are. Yes, the seeds are. are beautiful. All right, I'm gonna call it that the onions are ready for us to move on. Yes, so am I. So now we are adding our peppers and our potatoes to our translucent onions. There you go. Into the translucent onion pool. Wow. Yeah, the red peppers were a great call. Yes, they were. Thank you, Lisa Tucker. I have a food producer working with me now. Thanks to my buddies okay. at Al Roker Media and Entertainment. And they, uh, Lisa, the first thing she said was, you need a splash of color. I totally agree. Wow. Once everybody has added their peppers and potato, we will flavor it. Let's do it. So I'm adding salt first. And I always find it difficult to suggest how much salt. I think it's such a personal preference. I'd rather have less than more because you could always add more later on. I totally agree with that. It's this balance that I, you know, sort of play with every day as I cook. You don't want your food to be bland, but there's nothing worse than too salty. But what I find is that potatoes, because they have such a neutral flavor, are actually can take more salt than you might think. So, but you sure. can, my, you, that's exactly my, I use that saying all the time. You can't yes. take it out, but you can always add more. And I think that's just sure. really wise for all of cooking. Uh, when I'm cooking anything in the oven, I check it more than you might because you can always cook it more, but you can't uncook it. Yes, yes. So next we'll be adding the turmeric. Turmeric and I that think, has that I think, that sneaky R in it. Yeah, I've always my whole life I've said turmeric, and apparently it's turmeric. Uh, turmeric, but, but it's very beautiful, and I want to show you the turmeric that I'm using. This is new harvest turmeric, and it's from okay. Burlap and Barrel, 
uh, which is a wonderful uh, sort of environmentally and humanely conscious single source spice brand that I work with. It's burlapandbarrel.com. And uh, this is their beautiful turmeric, but they have a really beautiful cumin you might want to try. Burlapandbarrel.com. The cumin seeds look almost like they have little hairs growing out of them. And I've just really never okay. tasted the pure flavor of cumin as I do from theirs. But I put the turmeric in. Uh, after the turmeric, we're going to add the crushed coriander. Here you go. From my pestle. pestle. Wait, which is the mortar <laughs> and which is the pestle? This seems like it would be the pestle. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think I so. I never know because they come in a set. It's very unclear. It's very well, unclear. Well, you can't do it. You can't take one without the other, can you? No, because it would be useless. They're a, yes. they're a set. So now we're going to just stir everything so that we uh, incorporate the spices into the vegetables and mix now, the onion. What about onion. black pepper? What about black pepper, Damian team? You mean you in this dish? Yeah. I, you know, I really like the subtle flavor of the coriander and the fennel. Um, I know that people will, I mean, the people are free to add um, all Get kinds of, of things pepper. to it. I think, I think chili would even go very well, even garlic. But my whole thing is I like subtle flavors. And for me, it's very important to um, use herbs and spices because I'm so passionate about the health benefits of these uh, herbs and spices. Yeah. No, I hear you. That's good to know. I was about to put pepper in, but now what I did was I just threw my pepper out the window. <laughs> You'll need it for something else. I'm joking. It was just a, a, <laughs> a silly thing that I did for fun. <coughs> Excuse me. So have have once, we've, once we've mixed everything together, I am going to add some water just so that it speeds up the cooking. Um, not a lot of water, just enough to cook the vegetables. So like a cup of water? A cup of water would be perfect. A cup of water. Melissa, Chris, you guys got the cup of water I'm substituting covered? half of our water with butter. <laughs> Whoa, wow. they're buttering it up You're over clever. there in Texas. All just right, there bit. goes my water. And now shall I turn my flame up or keep it where it is? Keep it where it is. The colors look so wonderful. I really, I'm happy with the so, way everything's it's looking. It's really, really, really beautiful. And I think that you're right about the subtle flavors of the herbs and the just the natural flavors of the onions and the potatoes it's just a beautiful and absolutely delicious uh combination of textures and flavors it's just perfect i was really impressed yesterday well you were sleeping <laughs> <laughs> rightfully so it was two in the morning for you um so now i want to talk to you a little bit is every wait before i get yakking I want to make sure that everybody's uh, dishes are on the stove and cooking. And I'm looking at all the different monitors and I'm seeing that they are. And I know that everybody's kitchen that I can see that's beautiful, Melissa and Chris, smells absolutely wonderful right yes. now. Uh, and uh, we're all very excited about what we get to eat. So I want to uh, just talk to you a bit about the philosophy of Ayurveda, because I think that it's something that I've always known about, but not known a lot about, which is a very dangerous thing. So uh, I was hoping that you might be able to explain just some of the backstory, because this is a philosophy of living as well as food that predates, mm -hmm. it goes back many thousands of years and was passed down yeah. verbally as an oral tradition, because there weren't any yeah. written manuscripts. Um, Ayurveda is a very ancient science, and um, 
I think what we've done is probably adapted quite a bit to it. So to create balance, I'm, I'm going to, uh, obviously, if Ayurveda is a very, very vast uh, subject, but I'm going to concentrate on mainly the food aspect of Ayurveda. So to create balance in uh, your body while eating food, you need to have six tastes incorporated into your diet. And the six tastes uh, should be consumed on a daily basis. So the sweet tastes are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, pungent, and astringent. And okay. uh, today, that makes a lot of sense. So today we've I'll, I'll go through the uh, the tastes that we've included in this dish. So the sweet taste will come up in your onions and your peppers. Your sour taste we don't have today, but if you are really wanting to use this as your main meal, you could squeeze some lemon on it and you would get your sour taste. Then salt is, I think, obvious. We've added salt. Um, and then your bitter taste is your fenugreek. And if you have difficulty finding fenugreek, then salad greens, your arugula is bitter. So you could add a side salad and that would make up your bitter taste. Uh, pungency comes in with your onion. And uh, the astringent aspect is your potato and your onion. You also get astringency in your uh, coriander seeds and in your fenugreek. The Fenugreek uh, seeds are very high in phytoestrogens, so it's a wonderful spice to include. Then uh, it's also very good for promoting lactation, so good for breastfeeding moms. It contains a good source of selenium, which is an antioxidant. So I think just by incorporating fenugreek in your diet, um, and it's, it's simple, it's not such a difficult thing to do. Then your no. coriander seeds are a very good digestive. So they help you with digestion and they tone, they tone your gut. So it's, it's, it's a lovely uh, spice to incorporate. And Madeline, as you were showing me the green coriander, the fresh coriander or cilantro, what's good to know is cilantro is very good to consume in summer. It's cooling. So it's, it's great cooling. to use it in your uh, summer dishes. So you can incorporate it in salad or in dishes that you're making. But then you know it's, uh, it, it cools the dish down. Which is probably then, why it's so prevalent in Mexican food, because a lot of Mexico is very, very hot. And the, I think that for many Americans, the first experience of uh, cilantro that we have is in Mexican food, um, if we're paying attention. Should we check our pans for a second? I think we better. We better. I'm turning my heat up a little bit just because I have so much sure. more than you. Yes, no problem. And I've got a gas cooker. So the gas cooker is also, uh, the heat is quite intense. It's looking good and smelling good. Um, Marisa, what's going on in, uh, in your area, which happens to be just right down the hall? My auntie Sheila is actually in the house. Um, Hi, she, she loves your new chef coat. And a lot of people have been commenting on your new chef coat, breaking out the short sleeves for summer. They love to see it. Um, and Sam Packard says uh, in English or Italian English dictionaries translate cilantro as coriandolo. Did I say Coriandolo that right? Coriandolo in Italiano. That's my husband checking in. He's been banished from the house, so he's sitting in the parking lot at the supermarket, but he's watching the show on his phone. Thank you, Sam. Coriandolo. And that's actually a masculine uh, at noun, which is just interesting how each language finds its own uh, way of 
saying it coriander though. I yeah, and it's funny. I never knew coriander is the seed of the cilantro uh, plant. I want to take a quick poll here because cilantro is very divisive and you either love it or it actually tastes like soap and that's a genetic thing um kind of like that dress phenomenon on social media a couple years back the dress was golden white definitely the dress was golden white i don't know what those black and blue people were talking about but let us know (laughs) in the comments is cilantro yum or yuck oh we also have a couple of questions for damianti um sure so you Bavodi, yeah, I cannot say the username. I'm sorry about that. Can you please tell us what um, Ayurvedic doshas this dish benefits the most? Um, what a good question. So, so you get three body types, your pitta, kapha, and vata. And um, what I've uh, incorporated in most of my dishes is to make the dish tridoshic, which means that all three body types can consume it. So this dish would be tridoshic. Any of your body types can use it. Had we added um, anything heating like chilies or uh, maybe even black pepper, it would have made it quite heating and maybe a bit too hot for people of the pitta body type. And um, so by incorporating the balance we have here, it's ideal for all body types. What are the three body types? So it's vata, pita, and kapha. And those are called doshas? They are called doshas, yes. Wow, We're that is so fascinating. Um, A Tech 2 so also is asking, what if we don't have um, don't always have the exact spices? What can we substitute? So if you don't uh, have, for instance, fenugreek is not easy to come by. Cumin works very well because it's also a very good digestive. I think um, turmeric is something that you just have to put in the dish because turmeric has such amazing health benefits. It's antiviral, antibiotic, anti-inflammatory. You do want those things in your diet. So turmeric, I would not omit from the dish. Um, and coriander will help with digestion, so that's also very important. Mine is looking I'm just, just going to beautiful. check. I'm just going to check to see if my potatoes are getting anywhere near done. It should take about ten minutes. They look beautiful, uh, Melissa and Chris. Oh, look! There are Bobby and John's. Ken, where are yours? He's going to uncover his pot, looking beautiful. His, uh, oh, look at everybody's. And I'm looking into the Zoom room, which is where the Zoom chefs are cooking. And everything is just looking beautiful. I can almost smell it from here. Uh, yeah. What a pity we can't smell. <laughs> I know. But luckily, we have our own. And uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between vegetarian, which I understand that you are and have always been, and vegan, uh, and and where that, you know, how those differences happen, and have you been vegan at any point in your life? No, I'm too fond of my dairy to become vegan. So oh, I've been feel. vegetarian most of my life. Um, but were you asking what veganism means? I'm not, I'm, I'm familiar in to a small degree about veganism. Uh, Ayurveda doesn't, I don't think there was veganism when Ayurveda was first conceived. So which was how many is, years ago, like five thousand five years ago, five thousand years ago, we were eating ancient S- potatoes, people. Yes, so uh, dairy has always been quite important in Ayurveda. And as you may know, uh, ghee is often used in cooking. And I almost think that most dishes were cooked in ghee. Um, I think we can't afford to, in modern day, use ghee with uh, such abandon because we have such a sedentary lifestyle. I think life in those days was pretty hard 
People did everything manually. They walked wherever they wanted to go. They, everything was hard work. Uh, so I think we need to create a balance of how much ghee we add to our food. That's a really good point. And uh, because ghee is clarified butter and it's prevalent in Correct. Indian cuisine, but it still yes. has all of the fat and cholesterol of butter, right? It does. Uh, it's just that when you make ghee, you're actually removing all the impurities, your milk solids. Okay. It's called milk solids. So that's what you're doing uh, by using ghee. At the Indian just supermarkets checking. near my home, there's an entire yes. aisle of ghee. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, just okay. so many okay. different variations. I, I, want, I, I was a little overwhelmed i'm going to check what mine. variation what variation do they have madeline there's just many different brands and oh. uh shapes and sizes and bottles and it was literally an entire aisle dedicated just to ghee and uh i found it really fascinating and uh and and interesting and i want to cook with it but i bought a bottle uh about a year ago and i haven't used it and i don't think it's still good would you think it would be still good after a year uh if it's vacuum sealed key and if it's properly made it should keep in okay, fact great. in our in Ayurveda, um, medicinal Ayurveda, uh, ghee is often used to transport your herbs into the body it's a good uh, carrier a good carrier, uh, Madeline, like a I was delivery system. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Um, I was wondering whether I could just talk about guidelines for eating, Ayurvedically yes. speaking. Yes, that would be great. I'm just okay. going to stir my uh, my food a little bit. But I think... Sure, sure. Uh, yes, Damian, to give us some guidelines, because we are lost. Okay. So um, I am going to go through them and then... I welcome any questions. Um, eat only when hungry. You know, we are such creatures of habit that we just look at the clock and say it's now breakfast and then it's lunch. We don't seem to um, take the time to register what we're feeling. And ideally, your main meal should be consumed between 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. And for a lot of people, that is going to be quite odd because most people are used to having dinner. But I think that has happened because of modern living. The reason for having your meal between 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon is that is when you have the most gastric juices produced by your stomach. And um, ideally, if, you're, if you ate your meal then, you would digest and assimilate your food properly. So you're getting all the nourishment from your food. Also, oh, in Ayurveda, your digestive juices of fire is called jatar agni. Agni is fire, jatar is the uh, acid Can in I your try stomach. to say it? Jatar agni? Agni, A-G-N-I. Jatar agni. Jatar agni. So it's very important not to have cold drinks or anything cold with your main meal. Because if you think about the fire and you add anything cold to it, the fire is going to die. You're putting so the fire having, out. Yes. Yes. So if you're having ice drinks with your meal, what you're doing is dousing that fire. Your food is not going to digest as it should. And that is why people have indigestion and all kind of abdominal issues. So it's, it's such important. A, that is such a really applicable piece of information. Like that's just not like, you know, sort of advice and you can take it or not. That's like something that you can really change the way that you live your life in a positive way that's so simple. It, it, that's the thing. It's not really difficult. Uh, if it's very hot and you do feel for the cold drink, have it half an hour before your meal or half an hour after your meal, but not with your meal. So I think that is critical. If you do want to sip a bit of water, make sure that it's warm water or room temperature room so temperature. that you don't douse that fire. And 
Um, if you like the taste of ginger, if you added a slice of ginger in your hot water, that would be amazing because ginger helps with digestion. And incorporating ginger in your food immediately gives you the six tastes that creates the balance. So um, ginger is known as the universal spice. So just by incorporating ginger in your diet, you're already achieving balance. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the way and, I approach food. And then um, eat without distraction. We all know that uh, when we're watching TV, you're just stuffing your face because you are not present with what you're doing. Your mind is totally somewhere else. You're not tasting the food. You don't know the texture of what you're eating. You don't even know how much you're eating. So I have a question. Sure. Does that include Jeopardy? No, that was <laughs> <laughs> I love Jeopardy, and we always watch it while we're eating. We're messing oh, up, wow. Sam. So you'll, ha you'll have to tape that. <laughs> I will record it from here on in. Sure. Um, the other thing is, I think, eat locally as far as possible, not to have the carbon footprint that we all incur. And if you can have vegetables that are in season, because in Ayurveda, you're trying to completely be in tune with nature. And you can only do that if you are eating seasonal food and eating what grows in your vicinity. And then a difficult one in present day life, but try to eat freshly prepared meals. Food contains uh, prana or life force. And by repeatedly heating and cooling and reheating food, we are killing that life force in food. Ayurvedically speaking, your life force is killed six hours after you've prepared your food, after you've cooked. So sometimes difficult to follow, but as far as possible would be great if you could do that. You know what I, I think just is great is that these are guidelines. They're guidelines. They're not rigid rules. It's just things that you no. want to keep in your head. And I feel like the Ayurveda science was so far ahead of trends that seem so revolutionary to Americans, like farm to table, seasonal foods, eat local. You guys must be looking at us going, oh, my God, they finally caught on. Yeah, it's <laughs> taken time. <laughs> That's 5,000 years. Madeline, uh, can people just check that the food is, is cooked? Yes. Mine is cooked. Mine, of course, needs a little bit more because I put so much sure. more, but I'm not going to hold us up. Uh, I'm going to stick a lid on it, Damianti, just for a second. Yes, so that please it... do. And then and I my... think the... Yeah. The most important part of the guidelines is the consciousness of the cook. I think when you are preparing food, you have to be present and enjoy what it is you're doing because ultimately your vibrations are going into the food you're preparing and people who eat your meal will actually pick it up. So often you eat a meal and you're not so sure why you're not feeling happy with it. I think... And usually it's in, in establishments where you've bought food. We don't know what goes on there. And I'm not saying that you can't eat at, at restaurants or take out foods. But these are just, I think, points to remember. As Madeline, you, said, you pointed out, they're guidelines. And um, so the consciousness of the cook is extremely important. Well, I think that the people that are eating my food tonight are in for a treat because I am having such a good time and my energy is so positive right now that uh, they are, they're in for a delicious and uplifting experience. I'm, I well, always they, try to be very conscious in general. They, they're very lucky. They're extremely lucky to be having your food today. Um, but let me just see how Marisa... Uh, what Marisa has to tell us, and I want to see everybody else's food heretofore, like how we're doing. Yes, um, Heather Brown has a question for Damianti. 
Um, her 17 year old son isn't hungry until about 1 p.m. And she's wondering if that's healthy or okay. Should she let him do that? Seems like a sugar or blood sugar crash waiting to happen. So he isn't hungry early in the morning. Do I get that right? Yes. Um, I think it also to answer that question, I think that I need to also know what happens the night before. I'm not sure if he's having dinner late. But right. ideally That's in a really Ayurveda, good point. Uh, and ideally in Ayurveda, your breakfast is light, your main meal is lunch, and then dinner is light. <laughs> Now, what would you have for a light dinner? Just give me an example, please. I think that um, in, uh, uh, in winter, soups work very well, or some, uh, uh, some steamed vegetables. And in summer, you could do different types of salad. Salad. And that would work. Mm. And, you know, we in, uh, in the Indian cuisine, which is obviously uh, we, we following the principles of Ayurveda, but there are quite a few steamed dishes that we make with a mixture of flowers and we add veggies to it. We steam it, so it's quite light to eat. That sounds delicious with flowers. Mm. Um, look at John and Bobby, how is your stuff going? Oh, Are it's you wonderful. You know, doing it with red peppers and yams gives it a nice color. It's so bright. It matches your shirt or it complements your shirt. Uh, well, hopefully it'll match the shirt if I spill it on mine. Yeah, yours is in trouble because yours is a little light. I did find Damianti that last night when I was washing my pot, my entire hands turned, my fingernails turned yellow. So I do think when you're working with turmeric, it's advisable to wear a glove when you're cleaning up at least, because that sure. yellow really does uh, like to come away. Um, how are we do? Look, Melissa and Chris seem to be in great shape. Uh, We're doing good. We added a garnish to ours. Look at their garnish. Their garnish is steak. <laughs> um that's so funny people there are i bet there are like no vegetarians in texas that's hilarious <laughs> this isn't just are. a steak this is a filet ken is putting his on the plate but ken don't eat it yet we're all gonna take a group picture with our finished products and eat together so don't jump the gun and you uh zoom chefs there wait for us we're all gonna taste it together and do a group photograph um Look how beautiful that looks. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Well, I think mine is ready to uh, to make the journey from the from the uh, pan to the plate. Uh, I always say that before I got trained to be a chef, uh, I didn't know that plate was a verb. Uh, but we're going to do, <laughs> do we do, uh, uh, are we going to chop our cilantro or do we plate first? First plate. And then we First can garnish plate. with the cilantro. All right, here I come. I want to get a nice spoon so I can get a nice scoop. Sorry. You know what? I do want that ladle. Thank you. Oh, my God. The steam is so beautiful. I'm gonna get some of the green peppers. A little more red peppers. Beautiful. What a beautiful plate of food. Look, ha ha, very excited. Let me grab my fork. All right, we're gonna do some garnishing now. I have a, I have a very special system I do for fresh herbs, which I highly recommend is I cut the leaves off 
I'm going to get a nice big handful of this, though. And I don't like to chop it because I find that I lose a lot on the chopping block. So what I do instead is I make like a mitt of the herbs and I push them all together to get some of the air out. And then I take my scissors because I have stupid names for all my tools and uh, I cut it. And you get a really nice, you get the effect of the chopping and it doesn't, you don't lose half of it onto the cutting board. Oh, that's clever. I know, I'm a genius. People have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> just came out of my mouth. Sounds terrible. And then I'm going to take a full leaf and just rest it on the top because it's pretty. And is everybody ready? I'm doing it to that camera. Um, we're going to all show our finished products and we're going to hold them up there and have big smiles, and we're gonna take a team photo. And anyone at home that cooked along, what you're gonna do is you're gonna post it on Instagram, and you're gonna put the hashtag Mad in the Kitchen Live. Uh, and if you see the picture, you can tag yourself, we're gonna post it. So here we go. One, two, three. Cheese, I mean, no cheese. I mean, you could have cheese because it's vegan, <laughs> but we don't have cheese. And we'll get our nice picture. And now I'm going to actually, Marisa's going to come in and actually take a photo of mine uh, because it's so beautiful and we want to have a nice looking. Oh, look at theirs with the steak. That's hilarious. Ken, how is it? Delicious. Mm. Isn't it delicious. delicious? It's such a beautiful combination uh john and bobby how is yours let me see yours amianti can i mm. see your finished can plate? you see beautiful beautiful uh zoom chefs how does yours taste i need some <coughs> thumbs up yes i've got a thumbs Delicious. up all right now i get to join in the fun because mine has been photographed my poor husband whenever i cook for him I have to photograph the food so I can post it on social media and he always eats cold food. But he's such oh, a good <laughs> he's such a good trooper. Mmm. 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 Well, I'm gonna make this all the time now. It's yep, really you easy. You can vary it by putting sweet potato or parsnips, as you said, and create quite a few mm. dishes out of it. Mm, I don't know if I'd change a thing. It's so beautiful. Uh, that's that's my thing. I just think that you're just using two spices and it gives it such amazing flavor. You don't need to have anything more. I think I over, like, uh, I'm, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. And um, sometimes I do. I over spice just because I have so many of the beautiful spices, especially from Burlap and Barrel. And I put in too much and then they just drown each other out and you can't really taste. There's something really beautiful about the purity of this. And I love the dialogue between the coriander seeds and the leaf. That's like a really magical uh, conversation they're having. Mm, mm. It is, it's lovely. It's very wow. subtle. It's so great. Well, Tommy Andy, thank you. I'm so happy this was just a beautiful thing. I'm going to say goodnight to you guys, and I'm going to thank a lot of people, and you're just going to have to sit with me, sit through it, because I so just, many people help me. Yes. I just need to thank you for the opportunity. It's been real fun doing this. It's amazing. Madeline. And the fact that we're literally on other sides of the planet and that we built this sense of community where we're cooking together and other people are cooking together and other people are watching and learning and enjoying. I'm just... My food, I told you, the people that are eating mine are very lucky because my vibrations right now are incredibly positive. So good night and thank Amazing. you for watching. Thank you for cooking along. I'll see you back here next Saturday night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Mr. Eastern, when my buddy Carrie Keegan and I are going to have an early Cinco de Mayo celebration, a vegan Cinco de Mayo. And we're going to give you inspiration for what you're going to make for your Cinco de Mayo if you choose to celebrate it. We'll be posting the ingredients on all socials on Monday if you want to cook along. 
You can also look for the link to Cook Along on my YouTube channel if you want to join via Zoom, and I'll be posting it. Thank you, Damianti, as I said, for cooking with me and for staying up until three in the morning. Thank you to our home <laughs> chefs, John Idelson, Bobby Camille, Ken Jordan, Chris and Melissa Fritchie. Thanks to the Zoom chefs and all the people around the world that helped me. Thank you, here come the thank yous. Thank you, Sky Gleason, Marisa Mahoney, JJ McKenna, Ken Jordan, Paula Swan, Michelle Bott, Denise Moore, Ava Moore, Julianne Sell, Sam Packard, my husband, Guy Cochran, Alex Lindsay, Shannon Cooper, and the crew of Office Hours, Mickey Machakor, Kevin Hansen, Alex Goldner, Andrew Lipnick, Tucker Dragu, Aaron Huslage, Eric Hall, Christine Blackburn, John Burke, J.C. Brennan, Lisa Tucker, and of course, Al Roker at Al Roker Entertainment, Babette Perry, Barbo Fluga, AM Northwest, The Today Show with Hoda and Jenna, The Jason Show, Evening Magazine, Jean Cho and Selma at Silhouette, Kim and Lonnie at Suzanne's Nails, Seppo Fari. I'm sure I'm forgetting 400 people. The outpouring of support from Matt in the Kitchen has been and continues to be staggering. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on social media. I'll see you next time on Mad in the Kitchen. Yay!